Welcome back everyone, I'm Craven and this is Cold Steel. We have halfway of Trista left to go to talk to all the people on our free day and of course the entirety of the academy. We already picked our bonding events for today, which is going to be Alyssa and P. And the other one we left it uh, to Sarah, so in that one we picked at the last episode. So for now, let's uh, trigger the bonding event with Alyssa and then continue on with speaking to everybody in Trista. Hmm, what kind of clothes would you like? Are you getting something for Gwyn? Yeah, Sharon's helping me pick out some clothes for him to wear in the fall. After I was lucky enough to meet him with him on last month's field study, it only feels right to send him a little gift. That's really nice of you. And probably pretty practical too. The Highlands seem like they'll get really cold once the storm is over. <laughs> they should arrive just in time if we send them, them in the next few days. Now all we need to do is find something that actually suits him. I might be able to help her out. Cause uh, Reen, he's got the fashion sense of a guru. So yeah. Hell yeah. Would you like me to help you pick something? I mean, I am a guy and I wear clothes, so... Really? Oh, that's nice of you to offer. A more masculine perspective would be much appreciated. I trust that you will pick out something fitting, Masterine. Ooh, this jacket looks nice. He does like to dress pretty well, so maybe something like this would be good. A splendid idea. I'm sure he preferred that to a gift that reflects his age. However, he might not have many opportunities to wear this over in North. Hmm, you're probably right. How about getting him something for his outdoor activities? He really seems to like driving around and fishing. Oh, now that's a good idea. You know all that stuff pretty well, don't you? <laughs> I guess this is your chance to shine. <laughs> Here I'm uh, hoping not to disappoint. Let's start by taking a look over there. How about these boots? They're not bad, but I don't think they'll be that sturdy since they're casual wear. Gwyn's more like to have hiking boots or something like that already. Hmm, that's true. Hey, one of those hats over there might work. I think he'd look good in a hat and it's pretty much practical since he spends so much time outside. Oh, you're right. Let's go have a look. <laughs> Oh, how about this one? It looks good to me. The design is on it is nice too, so I think he'll like it. Great, <laughs> we have our gift. Sharon, could you... Hmm? Where did she go? Well, with that hee hee from Sharon, I think she's uh, thinking... This is actually turning out to be a really nice date between the two of them. I better leave them alone for a bit. Good call. <laughs> Hmm, something tells me she disappeared while our attention was on those hats. Maybe she was trying to give us some alone time. Ah, dang it, Sharon. <laughs> well, either way, let's take this up to the register. Sharon's probably gone back to the dorm, so we can show her later. Yeah, thanks, Reen. Your bond with Lisa has strengthened. To level 4. Reen and Lissa reach Link level 4. Ooh, so we do have level 4 abilities. Uh, she. Do we definitely need her in a party later? I think we should. Just because I'm very curious to what powerful strike and cheer is. Hmm. <laughs> Thanks for helping us pick that head out. I'm sure you'll love it. Trust Sharon to pull off a stun like that, though. Ah, oh, we're going to have words. <laughs> I know you will, and that's gonna be amazing. So, before we continue on, I wanna go back to the dorms. Cause Alyssa did say that she went back there. And I wanna see her response. I see you did return here after all, Sharon. I felt that excusing myself so as not to be in your way was most appropriate. 
In fact, I believe that it would have been even better had you enjoyed your shopping trip together for slightly longer. <laughs> I appreciate your concern, but there's no need to worry about me. <laughs> Please, feel free to return to Lady Alyssa's side if you wish. Don't worry, I shan't intrude upon your blissful time together. Yeah, she's already shipping them. Immensely. Uh, maybe uh, I'm starting to as well. Alright, let's continue on with uh, our tour through the town. And yes, we are going to leave uh, Fee for really the last one. The last thing we're going to do. Uh, I baked more of my extra special cookies yesterday. What makes them special, you ask? Oh, just the fact that the moment they touch your lips, you fall madly and passionately in love with me. Oh, boys, would you like to try some cookies I made? Abandon ship. Abandon ship. Ah, oh, darling Vincent, I quiver at the thought of you tasting my cookies. Once you under my spell, ooh, I can't even say the sort of things they will do out loud. Vincent, she's all yours. <laughs> 100%. Ah, the old schoolhouse is the place where all weird stuff happens, right? <laughs> no better material for the summer than stories to chill your spine. Well, be sure to tell me if things start happening in the old schoolhouse again. <laughs> this is where I'm gonna find the material I need. Come to think of it, isn't there some first years who's really into this kind of stuff? Nah, no, that's not good. I better set my stuff in quick or she might snipe me. Yeah, he needs to stay the number one fan of uh, Misty. Oh, I see Misty coming out of the train station on a regular basis. Do you think she might commute from Heimdall? I don't really know much about her, to be honest. Oh, on another note, that student over there is very... Uh, <laughs> Enthusiastic. He must be a Ben Time fan. Oh, he truly is. Heimdall's uh, Summer Festival is a massive event for us. Already got our coverage all lined up. This could be our big chance to boost our listenership even more and expanding our area of coverage. And first is spreading the info through tonight's Ben Time. The quality and quality of your, sh our, your show are what makes or break a radio station, so we gotta go all out with them. We're gonna be working Misty real hard this month. Uh, I'm sure we'll all work out, cause she got some dedicated fans. <laughs> okay, let's get uh, this one out of the way. Hmm, may I better off with a less formal tone? Hey there, Machias, what are you up to? Hmm, but what should I write? I'm just drawing a blank here. I don't think he even heard me. Is he studying? He's not writing in his notebook though. Should I try to get his attention? Let's go for it. Hey, Machias! Whoa, 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 whoa! You almost gave me a heart attack, man! What did you get here, uh, Reen? <laughs> just wondering uh, what you're up to. Oh, is that a postcard? Oh, don't look, please! He's writing his dad, isn't it? Oh, so you're writing up a submission for a radio show. Oh, there's no point in hiding it now that you've seen it, so yes! I want to submit an entry for the campaign this program's running that lines up with the summer festival. But as you saw, I got a bit carried away trying to make it something worth actually sending in. Oh, I never figured you for a radio buff, to be honest. Let's see here. Reen took a look at what Machias wrote. Oh, don't just read someone's writing without their permission. <laughs> Why not? I'm not going to make fun of you for it. Probably. Let's see. Hi Misty, big fan of the show. Ah, neat, it's for Ebb and Time. Wait, you, you're familiar? <laughs> sure, I've been a fan for a long time now. Misty's got a great voice, doesn't she? Oh, she really does. I practically fell in love from the very first syllable. I can't believe I had a fellow fan so close the entire time. <laughs> I don't think we're the only ones either. People have been spreading the word. 
It's a shame our field study runs through the summer festival, uh, though, isn't it? Yeah. When I was younger, I used to go along every year with... What's with the sudden silence? Oh, <laughs> sorry, it's nothing. Either way, we'll just have to focus on our field study and put the summer festival out of our minds. Yeah, it's a shame, but I guess you're right. Here's hoping Misty reads our, your submission on air, though. <laughs> you said uh, you wouldn't make fun of me. No, I don't think uh, he did that to make fun. I think he actually wants to uh, uh, hear it. Yeah. Vivi thought that we found to swap places yesterday, so I played along. But the head of the gardening club is a lot sharper than she seems. She figured out that I wasn't Vivi immediately. I've heard that the summer festival is full of exciting ex extractions. <laughs> I'd really like to go to see it for myself one day, but that doesn't seem like it will happen any year soon. Oh, the choice of not being able to take time of work. It's kind of a shame that we don't get so many extra customers whenever the summer festival runs around. They destroyed my chances of getting some time off to actually visit. It all realized that I'd swap places with Vivi right away. It didn't seem to bother her. She just made uh, me help out afterwards. I've been switching places with Linda since, like, forever. It's pretty fun to be able to live someone else's life for a while. Linda, guess who's the best sister in the world? I finished up your painting for you and gave it the sexy touch it needed to pull it all together. What did you do to my painting? She made your character boobalicious. I'm pretty sure of it. <laughs> Her wording, not mine. Heimdall's uh, Summer Festival is a prime opportunity to see the Imperial family in the flesh. Rumor has it that Princess Alfin will be making an appearance this year, which has everyone excited, myself included. Maybe I'll, I'll have to go too. Princess uh, Alfin has a certain angelic charm to her, but her public appearances are rare at best, so the Summer Festival should be quite the event. Maybe I should go. Hey, the real highlight of the Summer Festival is the Summer Races. These aren't your run-of-the-mill horse races, these are time-honored traditions. Even the Imperial family watches them. I think Prince uh, Cedric's gonna be there this year, so People are already getting all hyped up. Sure, Princess Elfin still is the most popular, but the people's love for Prince Cedric isn't anything to scoff at either. Tragically, Tolly's got a strict no gambling policy during business hours. <laughs> I'm counting on the seconds until the end of the day. Alright, anything new? Yeah, we got the special pista as well. Good. And premium coffee, but I can make that myself. I hope. <laughs> Anybody upstairs? Yes, it is. What is that? Oh, it's lean. <laughs> I thought someone was hiding in the actual barrel. So I was really trying to approach it really slowly, not to be attacked by some marauder or anything. Ah, you really get around, don't you, Celine? Hmm, her fur has such a nice sheen. I wonder if she'd let me pet her now. Ah, <laughs> uh, not today, I guess. <laughs> she seems so happy. Maybe I'll bring her some more another time. Oh, we definitely will. I don't know what it does. But it cannot be anything bad. Who knows? Maybe we uh, need to have that kitty on our side at some point. Alright, that's it for the lower Trista. Time for the higher ups. <laughs> and that's why I'm so excited for the upcoming performance here. Well, how about that? I'm a big fan of music too. I'll be there for sure. <laughs> Yeah, I'm a really sensitive guy after all. So come on, why don't we go together? Okay. I can appreciate the game, but she's a bit too old for you at this time. 
<laughs> Kay seems to be interested in attending the Wind Orchestra performance. I'm glad to hear that. Hopefully it ends up being a performance that everyone can enjoy. Wait, what? You were just telling me how dumb you thought music was the other day. Kay's been really weird lately. The way x Ron Rosine is creeping me out, to be honest. Mm-hmm. He's getting whipped, and she doesn't even know it. Toba came along to offer her prayers this morning. She seemed that tired as she did, though. I assume she's incredibly busy lately, so please try to do what you can to help make things easier for her. Toba came along to offer her prayers this morning. Oh yeah, I will always help her get things done. Because that's what we're here for. To help and to assist. The Imperial and Provincial Armies have been in opposition for the past 10 years. Largely due to their respective support of the Noble and Reformist factions. This is probably is truly saddening. As they are supposed to exist for the sake of protecting all Erebonian citizens. I'm certain that I just would never approve of such a petty state of affairs. I'm pretty sure you're right. Two organizations created for the sake of protecting the citizens of Erebonia now stands in opposition of one another. I'm certain that I just would never approve of such a petty state of affairs. Alright. Well, we shouldn't forget our fishing spot, because we haven't fished there yet. So there's definitely a couple of fish we can haul up. Alright. <gasps> What's gonna be in the cars today? More salamanders? Or was it more like a pond uh, thing? Hmm. Ooh, is that a new one? Now that's a catch! Nope, it's just a little bit bigger. A rainbow trout, okay. Nice. Ah. Okay, use the currency, I'm a bit low. That's a standard one. I like the four buttons ones because that give me the feeling that it's something special. And all the extra points we're getting, eventually it will lead us to another rank. And I think with the new rank, we have a higher possibility of getting other fishes in it. The bigger ones. <laughs> I wonder if, uh, if we are maxed out, we're gonna catch sharks or anything like that. That would be amazing. Three button carp. Caught one. Yeah. One last time. Come on, give me something special, something really big. Well, it is big. So technically, it's special. Now that's a catch. Thank you very much. All right. Let's see uh, how our homeschooled kid is doing, and of course, the family dynamics. Oh, that's it. I'm officially done. Two can play at your little game, Gordon. From now on, I won't be doing any housework whatsoever. They will show you for treating me like your personal maid. Oh, I'm officially done with Gordon's nonsense. Let's see how you can cope without someone to do all the housework for you. Well, in all honesty, can't blame uh, the woman. After a while, enough is enough. Because it has to always to be, have a part, to be a partnership. And if he's treating you like a maid, that's not good. Ah, oh, mom and dad ended up having a significant fight the other day. Mom's been acting like that ever since. I guess this is the product of all the stress she's built up. Hmm, if they have to fight, I wish they could do so quietly at least. It's hard to study while they're arguing. That's not the point where you should be worried about the meal. They might get a divorce. <sighs> I can't really focus on studying these days thanks to them. Yeah, I think it's more about... Uh, the noise than them fighting actually which is kind of weird but 
It's also a sign that it's probably going on a lot longer than we know. Which is definitely not a good thing. Alright, let's uh, pick up the side quest. Oh, my allowance is finally here. Time to shop the letter up. And to eat, maybe? <laughs> We've got the summer festival in Heimdall this month, and the Wind Orchestra's performance coming in the next week. That uh, month. We're only students once, right? I'm going to use this time to see as many different events and shows as I possibly can. It's a good choice. Do we need to go upstairs? There's no reason to head past here. Uh, where was the... I thought... Hmm, I actually thought it was uh, gonna be upstairs here. Hmm. No, notes, quests... The upper class dormitory, alright. Yeah, that actually makes sense. She was of the nobles, so it would be very strange to see her here. Unless he was looking for Ellen, but I think that's a little step too far. Ooh, the mate must be inside then. Once again, Master Patrick has departed to parts unknown. Hmm, he has been acting somewhat strange of late. Could something have happened at the Academy? It may be hard to believe, but he really is a sensitive young man. My apologies, my tendency to worry too much about my young master has once again overtaken me. While I am aware that my attempts to resolve these troubles for him will do him no good, I struggle to contain myself. Ah, uh, it's not a bad thing. You could you care for your own work? Oh, and Celestine has been serving Master Patrick ever since he was a child. I've heard that Sarifa's history with the Floral family is also a lengthy one. They both have such special bonds with their masters. Oh, I'd love to establish a relationship that uh, trusting one day. It's clear to see that Celestine and Sarifa are trusted by their masters. It's hard not to feel a little envious. Do we have one? Yes. And there is one on the back burner. Oh wow, I had no idea such delicious looking food existed. Thank you very much, this should be of great help. I'm sure it will. And there she is. Oh, you're Bridget from class 2, right? If so, I'm here to help with the request that you sent into the student council. Oh, that's me, alright. And you're Reen from class 7. Now that we've established that we know each other, let's get down to business. Can you start it right now? Uh, yes. Uh, I sure can. Ask away. Phew, <laughs> thanks. So, you wrote that you're having some issues with your childhood friend? Oh, that's right. Ellen from class 4, to be specific. We're from the same town, and we used to go to Sunday school together. I ended up having to leave that school, though. And I never saw him after that, so that's why I was so happy to run into him again here, but... Ah, I see where this is going. You're an upper class student though, aren't you? I'm surprised you were childhood friends with someone who, well, isn't. <laughs> what, is it that weird? Well, I wouldn't say it's weird, but it is pretty rare, isn't it? Well, it is true that nobles and commoners don't have many opportunities to interact with one another in Erebonia. I'm just the daughter of a baron, though, so our family isn't all that influential. My father was never one to put much importance on social standings either. He even let me attend Sunday school on my own, since it was close enough to home. Ah, that would explain it. I guess your dad's kinda like mine. So, what exactly do you want me to do? You said you weren't sure what he was thinking. Well, I'm not sure why, but ellen has been doing everything he can to avoid me ever since we met up uh, again here. <sighs> he just gives me the cold shoulder whenever I try to speak to him too. Ah, oh, that's not good. Any idea why you might be acting like this? Oh, not at all, which is why I'm so worried. I haven't done anything that could have offended him the last few times we talked. And it's not like he'd have some grudge from when we were younger either. We got along so well back then that we used to play together all the time. Hmm. It would be one thing if he was just avoiding me, but he started treating me like some sort of nuisance. As far as I can tell, something seems to have happened to him at the fencing club. 
those could definitely be related. Either way, it seems like the quickest solution is to ask Ellen himself. Oh, oh so, 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 slow down for a sec. Don't worry, I'm not just going to walk right up to him and ask him directly. But he might be willing to open up to another guy about it. I'll go talk to him and try to figure out what's going on in his head. Well, well then, <laughs> thank you. Okay, I better go find him. Actually, before I do, do you know if he'll be at the fencing club today? Most likely, yes. You'll probably find him in a training hall. Got it. Before you go, Reen, please promise me you'll tell me everything you managed to get out of him. If I'm to blame here, I read a no. So please, don't hide that from me. I won't, I promise. No, Reen is too nice. You won't uh, hide it from her. I just want to know why he's acting this way. Could I have upset him somehow? Please, Reen, help me figure him out. Well, I can only say one thing. I'll do my best, definitely. Alright, I think it's time for us to head for the academy. We got lots of things to do. Alright, is there any people outside? Probably the janitor, the pool, and the horse club. Student Union building for the optional for the other one. And of course, the gymnasium for Alan, which we will hit up probably last. Well, the old school house would definitely be last, the last one, but I want to go over the entirety of the academy before heading down the, let's just say, the bondings and the side quests. No, you there, button up that shirt. It may be summer, but only simpletons use that as an excuse to look sloppy. Oh, sorry. He's even stricter than usual today. Mm-hmm, cause the principal ain't here. <laughs> Free days are absolutely not days off, and you're not to treat them as such. Understood? Yes, sir. All right, let's do the main building as last, before we head down to the bombing events. Ah, arise, O oh youth, and become the foundation of the world. Emperor Dracos has been the definition of what heroes should be, since before I was even born. I guess that's what happens when you're the guy who brings a five-year war to an end. <laughs> It'd be nice to see a hero like that come out of this academy someday. I'm sure it will. Ah, there's an impressive statue of Emperor Tricles right in front of the Imperial Palace in Heimdall. You should take a gander if you get a chance. Yeah, we're definitely going to Heimdall, isn't it? For the next field study. And I really would like that. I even optioned uh, that as the last field study. So I gotta be right at some point, right? <laughs> No one else next to the building? Oh, this really does feel great. I'm not quite confident enough to try riding on my own yet, though. Uh, don't worry, I'll be there soon enough. As fun as this is, I want to be able to ride as fast as Lambert and uh, Eustace. It won't take me long, though. I just need to keep practicing. Paula is making progress, slowly but steadily. It won't be long before she can finally ride about on her own. <laughs> this means that the day we can all race along the highway together is drawing near. I eagerly wait the day that we can all race along the highway together. Well, I say together, but naturally, White Kum and I would lead the pack. <laughs> yeah, I know what you mean. And it's really nice to see a teacher that's so involved uh, with uh, club activities. Who knows? Maybe at some point we actually see that happen. It would be really cool though. Ah, wondering what I'm doing out here? Well, here's a little lesson for you. When you're outside, the wind lowers your body temperature. This wind chill, as it's called, makes you feel cooler. Basically, it's better to be outside than in on hot days. So it might look like I'm slacking off, but I'm just cooling down. Some people would say relaxing outside is the very definition of slacking off. Uh, it's too hot to even try to read through any of these papers. Worse yet, I've got to keep an eye on Min too. I'm getting too old for this. Uh, maybe, but you will still keep on doing it. Although we mainly focus on flowers here, we also grew a few vegetables. 
my personal favorites are these acerbic uh, tomatoes. Few things taste better than a big bitter bite of tomato. Eating them is a great way to beat the summer heat too. Is there anything acerbic tomatoes can do? Yeah, and they're bitter like those uh, s smoky tomatoes from the Simpsons episode. Definitely. We basically helped develop them during Chills in the Sky. And now they're well known everywhere. I'm not at all interested in summer festival to be honest. I'll tell you what I'm interested in though. Le Maire's annual angling festival. <laughs> I hope I get to uh, go again this year. I never really got on the whole parade thing. You're just standing around watching people walk by. Now, if it was a parade of rare fish... Hey, who knows. Maybe I will catch all the rare fish and I will give a parade just for you. <laughs> I have no idea where the other bonding events are. I think there are two in the Student Union building. Hey, Angie, what are your plans for the Summer Festival? I heard your dad told you to attend the garden party this year. He'd be a fool to assume that I'd ever go along with that. There's no way I'm wasting my time wearing a frilly dress and hobnobbing with those high society idiots. Hitting the stalls with you and Toa would be a million times more fun. <laughs> That's the Angie I know. Oh, the academy closed during Heimdall's summer festival. Can I say no to joining everyone for a stroll around the food stalls? So the academy is closed. And it was during a field study? Or during a free day? No, I'm still thinking there is a chance we're going to experience a summer festival. The academy is closed during the Handel Summer Festival. Yes. Oh, I have absolutely no intention of obeying my father and attending the stupid garden party. But I'm pretty curious about the rumors that Princess Elfin might be attending. She knows as one of the Emperor's greatest treasures for a reason. <laughs> She's like a little angel. I have absolutely no intention of obeying my father. Oh yeah, you definitely have to stay away from Elvin. She's way too young for you. Even though I have a feeling she would make exceptions for that. Man, if only we could battle more races, we'd be rolling out of here in a wave of Mira. <laughs> Watching him is fun enough, but... It's not just the same without cash on the line, you know what I mean? We'll just have to deal with it. Rules are rules, unfortunately. Oh, but speaking of, I read something very interesting in a magazine the other day. Oh, interesting you say. I'm all ears. Now, this is a contest practically tailor-made for me. They got a pretty fancy reward for the lucky winner too. I'd be an idiot not to let this chance pass. Well, you are kinda an idiot, Crow. No, this is a contest practically tailor-made for me. Did you not say something different? I got a pretty fancy reward for the lucky winner too. I'd be an idiot to let this chance pass. Man, Crow really does love his horse racing. He dove right in. Can't say I blame him though. The sword races are the horse racing events of the year. Alright, no new crackle. No new weapons. Good. Oh, my son works in Heimdall, so he must be pretty busy these days. The number of customers in the shops and the restaurants over there always spikes when the summer festival runs around. But he works as a chef at a little coffee shop over there. <laughs> I hope he'll be able to keep up with it all. If we go to Heimdall, I will go and say hi. Oh, my son works over in Heimdall. Nothing interesting as of yet. The tier is of considerable quality. <laughs> You're looking pretty comfortable. You have been coming here often lately? You might say that. I've been caught up in some bothersome circumstances as it were. Oh? Well, pay it no mind. It's nothing but a trifle, really. I wonder what's going on. Maybe I should ask him. Not yet. Let's activate uh, the bowling event after we're done with these bu this building and the library. Oh, my son Greg is a good kid. 
He's polite and smart, so I'm sure he'll do well in the capital. He's not the best chef though. Next time he comes home, I'm going to have to do something about that. That's the kind to kids do for a culinary crash course. He'll have no problem making a name for himself in the capital after I'm done with him. Ah, oh, come on. At some point he has to give me a recipe. Because he's the chef of the local uh, kitchen. If there's anyone, it should be him. Alright. And shall we skip the photography club? At least until the next episode? <laughs> Emma? If you were staring at those pages any harder, you'd burn a hole through them. Oh, Green, uh, uh, how, how do I exp explain this? Oh, Dorothy asked me to proofread this manuscript of hers, you see? Sounds like a rough job. Couldn't help but notice you're looking a little red, though. Are you feeling alright? <laughs> yes, <laughs> I'm feeling perfectly fine. And uh, this manuscript definitely isn't full of salacious imagery, either. Uh, see what now? Anyway, I'm doing fine, so there's no need to worry. Sounds like she could use a little help with her proofreading. Oh, if I hadn't done Sarah, I would have definitely picked Emma for this. <laughs> Ooh, maybe we should first see what Fee's point is before uh, locking it in. Emma, you're gonna go on hold, because this might be very funny. No. <laughs> I hope Emma enjoys my book. But even more than that, I hope that she and I will be able to join forces and create them together one day. <laughs> I hope she enjoys my book. Yeah, she's definitely enjoying herself watching those, uh, well, reading about those scenes between the boys. I can guarantee that. Oh, I'd hope that the club member here would have learned their place by now, but they actually approaching competence. We're going to have to nip this in the bud by showing them just what the upper class chess club is capable of. The new student uh, joining the lower class chess club has resulted in the power balance between us starting to change. We'll need to put an end to this before they start nipping at our heels. You want us to put our clubs on the line? Hmm, I'll make things simpler, you see. If you lose, then a lower class club will cease to exist. And while I can't see it ever happening, if we lose, then we'll leave the upper class club. No, only one will stand. O hold on a minute. There has to be a better way of doing this. W why do we have to put our clubs on the line? All I want to do is play chess and have fun. That's why you should keep on doing it. Hmm, we didn't ask for your opinion. We are members of the upper class chess club have already reached our conclusion. The match will take place one month from now. I suggest you start preparing. Uh, without an acknowledgement on agreement, you do not have a contest. Great, that's gonna be an interesting thing next month. <laughs> when I think of swimming pools, the first thing that comes to mind is drowning. And when I think of drowning, I cannot help but think of ghosts. Oh, I can hardly wait for swimming lessons to begin. Just a ray of sunshine, aren't you, Beryl? Oh, she definitely is. I do enjoy swimming lessons. I'm afraid I cannot swim, though. <laughs> I do like her, though. Okay, let's skip the photography club for the beginning of the next episode. I did. I sure did. I'm actually working through it right now. Phew. Glad to hear it. I was half asleep on my way to the academy this morning, so I wasn't totally sure if I'd put them in your mailbox or not. I take my work home all the time, but the sleep deprivation is really starting to get to me. Wait, you're saying you deliver them personally first thing in the morning? <laughs> That's right. I dropped them off on my way to the academy. On your way? Our dorm is anything but on your way to the academy from yours. It's in the opposite direction. Uh, I had no idea you were going uh, that far out of your way for me. Oh, it's really no problem. You're always helping us out, so it's the least I can do. <laughs> well then, good luck today. Thank you. Thanks. 
I still feel bad making her go out of her way for me. I have to work extra hard to make up for it. I really appreciate all your help, Reen. Brace yourself for some serious work. Now uh, we will work very seriously. Right, so we got Yusus and Emma in this building. With their bombing events. So we still have the library left. And after that I think it will be a good thing to watch both the bombing events of Yusus and Emma. Just to round it up for the day. And then last time we just have to do one more building. Confirm this uh, bonding event. And then start doing the side quests. Oh, the library is fairly cool, so it's not a bad place to spend the summer. It's kind of a nice uh, to sit down and read through a novel or two to unwind a little. Try it, you might be surprised. We get new books in from time to time too, so you never know when you'll stumble across something you haven't read. The library is fairly cool, so it's not a bad place to spend the summer. It's kind of a nice sit down and uh, read through a novel or two to unwind a little. Try it, you might be surprised. Hmm, it seems the principal is away from the academy today. It makes sense though. What with the upcoming Heimdall Summer Festival? I'm sure he has a lot of meetings to attend. He's a busy man to be sure. He's always has been. Yeah, that's why he gets paid the big bucks. Right, just a regular student. Can't sleep. Gotta get best grades. Oh yeah. He's gonna fail, isn't it? <laughs> gonna sleep right into his books. Okay, let's do both the bonding events of Yusus and Emma. And like I said, Emma is a potential, but I can always uh, redo her if we do not like Fee's one. But I'm hoping that Fee's one would be connected uh, towards the issues he has with uh, Laura, of course. But first, let's have a drink. You know, you can always come to me if you've got something weighing on your mind, Yusis. I'm willing to listen, or help out, or whatever you need. Hmm, I really mean meant it when I said it was just a trifle. But, that said, having you around may make things easier when they arrive. Yusus calling called casually invited Reen to join them for a cup of tea. And together they sat down to relax. Ah, nothing's more relaxing than a good cup of tea. I'm kind of surprised you treated me though. Ah, take nothing of it. Consider it an advance payment of sorts. Ah, I see. That sounds ominous when I don't know what you're paying me for. And here they come now. Ah, good day. It appears our paths have crossed once again. Is this one of your friends from class 7? Oh, that he is. They're upper class second years from what I can tell. If you have business with me, I'd appreciate you made it brief. Oh, well, how shall I put this? We just want to ask you once again if you'd be interested in accompanying us in the saloon. Ah, now I get it. Uh, as I told you before, I'm afraid I have little interest in spending the day being pampered. And as you can see, I have a prior arrangement with a friend of mine. Ah, I, I, I see. Well, terribly sorry to interrupt. But should you have a change of heart? We would love to see you there. You could bring your friend along if you'd like. The upper-class second year slouched off towards the saloon with a look of disappointment on their faces. Ah, so I see people started inviting you up to the saloon again. Indeed, and when I was able to dissuade them for a while, it seems as though they've all steeled themselves for another salvo. I found that the haughtier the noble is, the easier and more satisfying it is to reject their invitation. Finding the words to decline more subdued ones like the ones we just spoke to is much more uh, difficult. <laughs> so you used me as an excuse to keep them away. Clever. I don't think those two had any ulterior motives though. They just looked like they wanted to talk to you. 
is that were the case, then there would be no reason to invite me to the saloon now, would there? <laughs> inviting you someplace exclusive is probably tied to their noble pride. People have probably started inviting you again, because you're not as hard to approach as you used to be. Hmm, so this all comes back to you then. <laughs> yeah, I don't know about that. But more importantly, why don't you take them up on their offer sometimes? The saloon might be full of snooty people, but I'm sure there will be more students like them who simply want to talk to you. Hmm, perhaps I will, if the motivation strikes. But you'll be accompanying me if I do. <laughs> sure. And you know Reen would do that for uses. Counter attack as well. Alright. Alright, I think then now it's time for Emma. I wonder what uh, kind of lewd thoughts he would have this time and if Reen would be again interested in her, let us say, outer forms. Emma, if you're starting at those pages any harder, you'll burn a hole through them. Oh, <laughs> how do I explain this? Uh, Dorothy asked me to proofread this uh, manuscript of hers, you see? Sounds like a rough job. I couldn't help but notice you're looking a little red though. Are you feeling alright? Oh yes, I'm feeling perfectly fine. And this manuscript definitely isn't full of salacious imagery either. Say what now? Uh, anyway, I'm doing fine. There's no need to worry. It's not that I'm worried, but I want to know more. How about I give you a hand with that proofreading? But uh, what? You 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 want to help out w with this? Is there some reason I shouldn't? Of course not. Uh, well, <laughs> if you really insist, then feel free. <laughs> it's gonna be good. <gasps> uh, Emma? Yes? This wasn't written by mistake, was it? It's definitely a romance novel, but all the characters are guys. That does seem to be the case, yes. <laughs> Hmm, <laughs> so how do you like it? Ooh, please say you love it. It makes my world so much wider. Uh, how do I put this? I feel like I've been introduced to an entirely new world and that I might not have wanted to know existed. I, I, I had no part in writing it. I had no idea Dorothy wrote those sort of stories until recently. <laughs> this is the genre of young womanhood. Come on, you two. There's a lot more for you to proofread. <sighs> she finally let us get some rest. There aren't the easiest novel for a guy to get through. <laughs> I was afraid of that. But that genre seems to be getting more and more popular within uh, Arabonia lately. Well, to each his or her own, I guess. And while I'm always glad to have my horizons broadened, I definitely could have done without some of the more graphic details. Agreed. I'm feeling a little flustered myself after that. Uh, I got so embarrassed that I fucked up my glasses. Emma removed her glasses and placed them on the table. Emma? Uh, yes? Is something wrong? Oh no, it's just that this is the first time I've seen you without your glasses on. Uh, what? Of you. Oh, sorry. I, I didn't mean to stare. It's just, I mean, it really changes up your look. I'm sure not complaining. <laughs> How embarrassing. Uh, perhaps we should get back to proofreading now. Oh, yeah, right. And there's no need to force yourself through the worst of these. If they get too graphic, I'll take care of them. Yeah, she's slowly starting to get used to them. And thus they return to the club room to wade through erotic tales of passionate young manhood once again. As Reen and Emma neared the brink of exhaustion, the proofreading finally came to an end. Brilliant one was this again. And even here you can see a little bit of a glimmer of a relationship uh, between them. And uh, Reen definitely thought she was looking nice without her glasses, which is not a bad thing. Alright, 
So that's it for the bonding events. So the only thing we have left now is the entirety of the main building. And of course, uh, the meeting event, bonding event with V, and our two side quests. After that, we're all done and ready to go to the school building. Yeah, I think we can definitely reach that on the next uh, episode. But until then, I wish you all a great night, morning, day, wherever you are. And if you're still here, don't forget to hit that like button, subscribe, and be back next time as we make our way through the last few people left here at the school. As we help Bridget with Ellen, of course, try mm. to fix Rex, and after that, go to the old school building. Until then, bye-bye.